Welcome, Hall Dwellers. My name is Nacho Bidness. So here we are today at Bunker Hill. I've chosen to kind of forego my usual before and after shot because this settlement, the, the story is pretty much told to us by the game and the theme is set for us and it's already really built up before we ever even uh, set foot in it. So welcome to the caravan base. This is a, another early settlement that I did and since there was so little room I didn't do much in the way of building here with the exception of this one massive structure around the Bunker Hill Monument Obelisk. I did however treat this as another test case for junk decoration. I've gone through and added some crops and water purifiers and a little bit of junk here and there just to see what's going to behave itself versus what's going to fly off into outer space. And that settler got in the way. There's not much room to add anything here on the perimeter except for this one spot where I was able to kind of shove in one of the prefab wood shacks. So although I can't really make up my own story when it comes to this place, I did try and do a little bit with decoration in a way that makes sense. For example, there's a tinker that lives in this shack. He's got his wrench and his Ushanka hat, which somehow makes him smarter, and some engineer's armor. Along the back wall here, there just wasn't room to do anything. So we come over here to the chem station, which is located directly below the outhouse, because chem stations are gonna smell, and we might as well put all the bad smells in one spot. There is uh, a few little supplies here, some fertilizer and some plastic in case someone wants to make some jet. Coming up over here, we've got the bar, which was kind of fun. They're, they're, the junk decoration has gotten so much easier with the last patch. Stocking these shelves would have taken me hours before. I think I probably did it in 15 or 20 minutes now. And we've got a few other supplies here. I don't remember putting those cigarettes in the refrigerator. That's weird. Um, I don't remember the cigar boxes either. I wonder if the sellers will sometimes just randomly put stuff there. Strange. I did add a cooking station and stock the bar a little bit with some booze as well as uh, some little bits of food over here, stock the Nuka-Cola machine. Although that bottle has fallen over, that top shelf in the Nuka-Cola machines just does not want to accept a bottle of Nuka-Cola for some reason. Over here we've got a little water purifier and a generator along with some gas to power that generator. A shack that is gonna be for traders because man that is just a crappy place to live it's completely exposed to the elements there that brahmin pen was pre-existing so was this structure back here um, for some reason the settlers that are named are all glitched for some reason, after the Battle of Bunker Hill, they never recovered. They still act like the battle is going on. So since this is where Meg cowers, uh, I decided that this was going to be Meg's room. I put down a 
few toys and stuffed animals for her, and Meg's not a terribly pleasant child, but when you look look at where she lives and uh, that this is all she has, it suddenly goes from being a annoying character to being kind of a sympathetic one. Here's a couple more settlers that are uh, that are glitched. The doctor's office here didn't do much again except put down some junk and this has proven to be fairly stable. I put down some meds and a pipe pistol in case anybody decides, any, uh, any chem heads decide that they're going to rob the doctor, especially for her medex. We'll nip back over here to, I think, really the central set piece of this settlement, the, the bazaar. This is what gives it that caravan base feel. Now, glitching this trader into that counter was... Uh, it wasn't impossible, but with the rug glitches on those level 3 shops being nerfed somewhat, it was challenging. Here's the inventory for that junk trader. And everything seems like it's, uh, like it's behaving itself. I actually fast traveled away and fast traveled back and um, everything seems to be where I put it, including even just this little shopping basket that is here for anyone to uh, come and make a day of it and, and collect their purchases. This weapon vendor over here is in front of where Old Man Stockton cowers and these glitch settlers, the ones that are traders, they'll still talk to you but for some reason they just won't go stand where they're supposed to. Looks like this weapon vendor is uh, stocked up. We'll come back over here. I mentioned in another video that I try to have some kind of toilet facility in every settlement and it was because this one was here. I got to looking at it and thinking about it. That's uh, this is part of everyday human life and well I mean everybody poops and, uh, and everyone wants to have a pot to piss in so um, I try to give my settlers that. It doesn't really affect the happiness but it is just a nice little roleplay element. Coming back inside, we do have a clothing merchant, who's another one who is uh, packing a holdout weapon, just in case. This counter over here, I didn't bother stocking the shelves, because this is where the roving traders all hang out, and they carry their own inventory. This over here is uh, is Deb's shop, and if, uh, if Bethesda ever decides to patch this so that the settlers will go back to what they're supposed to be doing, um, it's here and it's ready and waiting for her. I didn't do much. I think, I think this is a nice touch, the little chalk drawings that Meg does. Um, I didn't do much to this obelisk except add this fire barrel, it just looked like it belonged there. Um, this is a real life place in that there is a real Bunker Hill War Memorial and it commemorates really one of the first battles of the American Revolution. If you're not familiar with it, you should read up on it, it's kind of interesting. So, this really is the one structure that I was that I built here. This this massive uh, thing that gloms onto the side of the obelisk. The obelisk, you know, looked like a big, tough thing that uh, that could stand to support some extra buildings around it. And I think probably a lot of people build this way. So we come in here, and on the first floor. We have a fully stocked workshop with a weapons bench, 
and an armor station as well as uh, a lot of the crafting materials you would need to upgrade your gear and coming up here is the armor merchant he also has a fully stocked room here now this is something that I like doing I like putting vendors indoors when I can. I see a lot of shops on YouTube that amount to roadside stands and they look great in, in a settlement where there's not space for it. I, I shamelessly rip off those ideas all the time. Uh, no Respawns and Mad Queen Show both uh, have some really great outdoor shop ideas, but I like putting my shops indoors because to me that feels more realistic. When you go to buy something in the real world, generally you will go inside of a building and you will go to someone that works at a shop or, or owns the shop and buy something inside. Roadside stands are, are really more the exception rather than the norm. Over here is just kind of a little lounge area, and I like to think that the caravanners will sit up here and argue about trade routes and make deals, all the while using this loft area to keep an eye on potential customers or potential competitors down in the bazaar. Up here, on the roof of the bazaar, when I started throwing more people at the settlement, I needed another place for a little bit more food, so I put in a little rooftop garden. Uh, the Most of this building is actually modeled in-game as a tarp, which means I didn't think that it looked good to build on it, although that person seems to think it's okay to stand on it. I, I restricted myself to just building on the concrete and wood part of the roof. Over here we have a table that's set for two next to the grill and now there's a piece of junk that has decided not to behave itself. That, that oven mitt was sitting uh, on the shelf of the grill so there are still some things that uh, that will fall. I had to use rugs to cover up the, the gaps in the floors. There just wasn't any other good way to do it. This little shack here is... I like to think of this one as, uh, as being for a young married couple that has their first baby on the way. And they're... They're trying to decide how that's going to fit into their lives. I want to talk about, it's going to seem small, but I want to talk about this wire for a second. When I built this structure, I set myself the challenge of building around these wires and not having them clip through walls. And it's not perfect, but I came pretty close with having that go through a hole in the roof and then out through a hole in the side of the building. Um, there's no functional reason to do it, I just thought it looked better that way. We do have a, a place where we can take a look out at uh, where a lot of times raiders will spawn. Right now there's still Brotherhood of Steel out there in Power Armor, that's what that light is, uh, left over from the Battle of Bunker Hill on the, the main quest storyline. Up here, getting close to the end of this one, there's, a, there's another spot where I've deliberately put a hole in the building for that wire to pass through. I should probably go back and replace those with the steel railings from uh, from the concrete tab. 
because I think that would allow that wire to pass without actually clipping through this. Clips right through the corner there. There is a balcony over here where you can get a, uh, a good look at the bar and kind of the rest of this side of the settlement. So walking into this final room here, this final level, I have too many people here and this kind of turned into a barracks. I did the best I could with the space that I had to uh, kind of divide this off into small individual rooms. But there's 28 people and 28 beds and that is just enough. Not sure why the happiness is so low. It was up in the 80s earlier. So got this uh, low overhanging hallway and I think that actually the, the pathing AI uh, will not allow people to make it up here but technically the beds are here and I think that's all that matters as far as uh, trying to compute happiness although maybe not since uh, since it is so low right now so we're gonna run back outside and I want to say as we get to the end here thank you very much for watching if you liked click the like button if you didn't like please tell me why and I'll try and do better next time if you want more please subscribe so Thanks again for watching. My name is Nacho Bidness, and I'll remind you that it is a great big wasteland out there. So let's go have fun in it.